And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our presenter for today. We'll be hearing from Results Positive CEO, Mr. John Ferner, as he walks us through some of the introductory principles and guidelines for implementing a continuous testing approach in your organization. And with that, we'll go ahead and turn the time over to John. Thanks so much, Sean. Uh, and we appreciate uh, everyone for uh, joining our webinar today. As uh, Sean mentioned, uh, we want to really uh, talk about some of the foundational building blocks uh, for organizations with a continuous uh, testing journey. So uh, we look forward to uh, interactive uh, discussion today and a, a brief overview and introduction to some of those building blocks. So kind of the uh, starting off here and just focusing on kind of why DevOps, why are we looking for ways to uh, have that uh, continuous delivery, uh, continuous testing as we know, there's uh, extreme market pressures to uh, provide uh, business capabilities very quickly. So uh, increase or, or speed that time to market uh, to uh, beat the competitors. We also understand uh, the customer experience and how customers uh, experience, uh, whether it be internal business processes and able to uh, handle their day-to-day -day, uh, job or whether it be a consumer on how they interact with uh, products or services uh, companies. As well as in how do we best uh, boost uh, efficiency and uh, streamline overall interactions. So the ability to uh, meet these objectives is really at the crux of uh, establishing a continuous delivery DevOps uh, framework and process, as well as then uh, tapping into ways to uh, really uh, accelerate uh, your testing activities so that you can have those high quality products and services so that uh, the customers continue to come back uh, to partake of those uh, services. So there is a, a revolution going on and uh, a lot of that digital disruption has probably occurred as well as it is occurring in uh, current industries. We've seen it in some leading industries as you can see here uh, how things have uh, dramatically changed. We know that, uh, at least I do, that I, I used to go to uh, Blockbuster to uh, rent videos, and now that's all digital online. It's just amazing how abruptly um, we stopped going to the uh, video store uh, and immediately went to digital. Uh, and that was a function of the customer experience, a function of uh, easy access uh, to new products. Uh, I also experienced... Uh, the change when it came to how do I get access to uh, a transportation services. So there, the, the traditional going and waiting in line for a taxi versus having that personal interaction and requesting a taxi on demand uh, with Uber and Lyft and others. So we can see how it's changing our lives. We can see that uh, the need for continuous delivery of capabilities. Typically today, every time we log into a Netflix or an Uber or an Amazon, uh, we see new capabilities, new functions, and that's a, a result of the end-to-end -end, uh, DevOps lifecycle, which includes the uh, customer feedback on the operational side of things, and then that's then driving and creating what the new capabilities should be that the customer experience is generating uh, for the organization. So this disruption revolution is going on. It is disrupting industries, as, uh, as mentioned, and it's vital for organizations to maintain their overall competitive advantage. So what is uh, innovation? What is really the crux of uh, DevOps? How do we uh, build, test, release, continuous deliver uh, software and products uh, in a very fast fashion? Uh, and I would also say in a very frequent fashion. We know that there were the agile uh, processes and methodologies that came out, and that was uh, allow us to more frequently uh, complete solutions, whether it be a component of a solution or an end-to-end -end solution, complete that more frequently in various uh, two-week sprints, as an example. We take that further, and how do we automate that overall continuous delivery, uh, not just of uh, releasing the code, but uh, also of deploying infrastructure so that I can have uh, test environments available for automated testing 
so that we can automatically deploy the full infrastructure, burst it into the cloud as we need to scale the organization or scale the solution. You know, how did um, the Netflixes of the world or the Ubers of the world, how did they uh, scale to meet the rising uh, customer and demand very, very quickly without having those outages? And that's by having access to scalable infrastructure. Uh, the last thing I would say, and this is our, our experience in, in working with customers today, almost every organization now views themselves as, if not a, a software business, as a technology business. Uh, one of our recent customers in the financial services industry basically see themselves as a technology organization. And really, they uh, reach out and touch their customers only through digital means so that they can uh, – transact business digitally anywhere at any time and don't have a physical uh, branch or physical uh, financial location for customers to come into. And so it's more vital to make sure that that continuous delivery of new features, new functions, new capabilities are always that they're available to uh, their customers. So from a, an overall a DevOps perspective, as we're kind of alluding to, we have business demands, and we need to provide business solutions in a very fast uh, fashion. Uh, the outer loop here, I kind of look at it as the, the ongoing continuous delivery uh, process, uh, continuously uh, assessing uh, the overall delivery of this process. And then you, you can break that down into your overall build and test cycle, but today we're going to focus on uh, the continuous testing portion of that. Next, there's the release and the continuous uh, deployment uh, and be able to uh, do that not just of the actual deployment of the software but also the deployment of the supporting infrastructure. Uh, next there's the uh, continuous operations continuously monitoring and scaling uh, your overall uh, environment and production environment to uh, meet the scaling demands of the business. And then as a result we're able to provide those business solutions uh, very frequently in a very fast uh, fashion. But it requires many different things to change in an organization. Uh, one of the biggest uh, changes that are required is a cultural change. Uh, the way things are done, the business processes by which uh, new solutions, uh, new technologies, new software uh, is developed requires a new approach. So there's different development practices that uh, need to occur. So if, I, so if we take a step back and say, let's just focus on continuous testing, what are some of the core building blocks that we need to set up to enable uh, continuous testing? And so we feel that it starts off with uh, development practices. Uh, and so if you think about if I need to continuously test, I need to make sure that I plan for a test so that as soon as I'm done in development, I can execute those tests uh, and then continue on in the overall uh, process. It also requires setting up various testing frameworks so that you can have the reuse of various testing assets, component-based uh, planning and testing so that uh, you can achieve that overall automation. Next, there's the requirement of automating the infrastructure. And why this is so vitally important, a lot of times uh, it's very challenging for organizations to actually have a test environment where, by which they can do their testing. And so here we're looking at automating the setup of those test environments so that those tests can be run uh, and validated uh, automatically. Many times those can be run and tested overnight or uh, those can be done uh, during the day. And then there's the actual automation of the test execution. So there's many different types of testing that can be automated today, whether that be the uh, automation of unit testing, which ties back to the development practices, or whether that be the automation of your, your standard functional testing. That could be the automation of re regression testing. Uh, that could also be the automation of a security testing. So there's many different uh, types of tests that can be automated uh, and provide that feedback by which then that can roll back into the testing practice. Uh, so it really taking that uh, factory approach and how do we end-to-end -end, uh, provide that uh, continuous delivery and that continuous testing throughout uh, the life cycle. 
So when we look at overall continuous testing objectives and building blocks, we first feel that it's important for organizations to set up their vision and set up uh, their overall objectives. Uh, so an example here that we see with organizations is they're looking really to focus on implementing the right mix of process frameworks and technology solutions to accelerate that time uh, to value, to accelerate uh, their overall testing activities so they can ensure high quality products. Some of the common goals that we see in organizations that are driving and supporting this vision is the, the speed to market. But the speed to market of high quality solutions, recognizing that customer experience is uh, paramount and repeat customer business. So as a, as a result of uh, focusing on high quality uh, software, the goal is really around reducing the number of defects and uh, incidents that are occurring in production. Uh, we understand those are key items that uh, impact and create negative customer experience. Increase the reuse of uh, not only testing assets, but also uh, increase reuse of requirements as well so that you can get that leverage of reuse consistently uh, plan as well as consistently test. And then being able to have that continuous uh, testing of those new, new solutions. Uh, and then what we see in terms of the foundational initiatives here uh, is first to look at what are the uh, uh, frameworks to set up to manage requirements. And we'll talk a little bit about the development practices and how that plays into things as well. Next, there's a looking at uh, how to improve overall test planning and execution. And it's really about setting up various frameworks, reuse of your various assets. We see many organizations that they uh, end up creating uh, basically redundant and repetitive tests, and te whether it be test plans or test scripts. And so those are being created in multiple different uh, groups and departments versus having those uh, centrally created and reused, uh, thereby accelerating the overall automation of, of testing. And then being able to, as an end result here, uh, setting up the various uh, processes and tools to enable that automation of uh, testing. As we mentioned, there's many different types of uh, tests that can be automated. There's the, the unit, the functional, there's actually the integration uh, testing, regression testing, uh, performance testing, uh, as well as uh, security testing. So it's important for organizations at first to start off to understand whether they're testing objectives, uh, then from there, setting up an overall uh, a blueprint and roadmap uh, for their continuous testing initiatives. Next, I wanted to highlight uh, some of the core uh, testing building blocks that we uh, see organizations uh, focus in on. So I mentioned earlier about the development practices. So we, we've uh, seen, and many organizations have adopted agile development especially when it comes to uh, e-commerce solutions, uh, web solutions, mobile solutions. Uh, we see more of uh, iterative development when it comes to ERP uh, solutions. But the agile approach is one step in the journey here to help with uh, continuous testing. One of the key areas we see is a test-driven development and starting to apply that methodology in organizations really helps achieve the DevOps goal and objective but it also helps uh, with continuous testing, specifically around continuous unit testing. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, test-driven development, uh, what that is, and, and how that helps organizations with their DevOps journey. Next, uh, a key building block here, which really helps to address the need for reuse of testing assets, uh, is setting up uh, various testing frameworks. So we'll explain uh, the value and the benefits of testing frameworks and really what to be focusing on in terms of setting up those frameworks. You can see here uh, some of the top three frameworks that we see a, a value for organizations is first the requirements. Uh, we all know that testing is based upon uh, the set of requirements or business functions that uh, we, we are trying to uh, implement. Next, and specifically when it comes to uh, mobile uh, as well as when we see it in a lot of the web, 
is business uh, process testing framework. That starts off with originally defining the overall end-to-end -end business process. And then if you uh, take that and, and tie that into uh, development practices, so you need to understand the business process. From there, you can actually start creating your tests for testing and development. And then once the development's done, then you'll be able to automate a business process testing. So the whole entire life cycle is, is critical. But we found even in our own internal uh, app development, by understanding the overall end-to-end -end business process, uh, setting up those uh, tests and defining those tests as part of development, and then being able to automate that really uh, streamlines our activities, helps us really achieve that quick time to value, quick speed to market, uh, thereby helping us with our continuous test testing initiatives. And then making sure that you've got the frameworks in place to support your various automation testing frameworks, as well as uh, exploratory and manual testing. We've talked a little bit about uh, automating the infrastructure and infrastructure deployment. We're really not gonna focus on that today in this conversation, but uh, some of the key uh, building blocks to think about there is you've got these various technology solutions and obviously you need to make sure that you've defined that infrastructure, what's needed to support that application and the associated blueprints. And then those are the building blocks by which you can then use to automate uh, the setup of that infrastructure and automate the deployment of that infrastructure, all while uh, making sure that you have available on-demand infrastructure. So it's one thing to define the environment and all the different infrastructure components uh, that are included in your blueprints, and then be able to automate the creation of that, but you need to make sure that you have an available uh, on-demand infrastructure that you can use. So that can be obviously infrastructure in the cloud, or if you have the your own private cloud internally so that you can burst and uh, create those environments for testing on demand. And then last but not least is automating the test execution. Uh, and so uh, we'll highlight uh, that as well. Um, but uh, our core focus today is gonna be more around the development practices and the testing frameworks, which are really the, the initial um, building blocks. But without those in place, it's really difficult to uh, achieve continuous testing, as well as uh, being able to do that in an efficient, efficient manner. So test-driven development has uh, definitely been around for a while, uh, but it really helps and requires an overall cultural change. I was speaking with a customer uh, recently, and uh, he manages the overall application development group. And as they've been rolling out their overall DevOps process, just the, the change up front to get the developers uh, to actually develop tests for their coding before they actually do the coding has been a monumental change for them. So you can obviously have that assistance with some of your business analysts, but uh, on unit testing, it's also good to have the, uh, the coders help develop uh, some of those tests. So what's really new here is the change the starting point from a development perspective. So instead of focusing on coding and building that uh, widget or building that to capability, it's focusing on building that test. So how does that widget need to perform? How do, what would uh, indicate that that widget has, doesn't perform um, or, or fails to perform by identifying those uh, various tests up front? Then you focus on coding to make sure that uh, you can pass those tests. Uh, once those are, tests are being uh, executed, being able to refract or recode uh, and uh, be able to run those tests. So it's really a, a different mindset here. Up front, it might require a little bit more time for the organization to adopt this change of process and, and really believe in the overall culture change that's required. But once you start doing that, um, I'm coding now, and once I'm coding, I'm immediately testing. So that's accelerating uh, that testing uh, speed, as well as assisting with uh, overall continuous testing, specifically with unit testing. If we can actually automate unit testing and uh, reduce the amount of uh, defects coming out of uh, unit testing by doing our refactoring of those solutions, 
that's going to make sure that we don't spend unnecessary time uh, with our follow-on test cycles as part of continuous testing. So we're seeing that as a key building block, is making sure that organizations have the right uh, tests, excuse me, the development practices, uh, as well as uh, focusing on building and automating uh, unit testing, as an example here, using the test-driven development uh, methodology. Next, I wanted to kind of go into uh, testing frameworks. We see that this is uh, really one of the, uh, the key building blocks here uh, for organizations before they get into uh, doing a lot of automation. So it brings up the question, why well, testing frameworks? Um, and it really comes back to how do we uh, set up the foundation so that we can actually do automate uh, automation. Um, so it really uh, drives the question, what is a framework? So you can see on the right-hand side here, framework's really setting up the standards uh, by which everyone in the organization would follow for uh, certain types of testing. Um, and it's also then setting up the very structure. So what's the structure? Is it hierarchical? Is it component-based, object-based? Um, how are we gonna set up the structure uh, of those uh, test plans, test scripts, uh, so that they can be set up in, in the same fashion uh, and repeated? Next, it's really important to make sure that we have the same naming conventions of those uh, components and of those objects so that uh, someone can go to that central repository they can easily search and find uh, existing uh, test scripts or test plans that can be reused and, and automated. So by setting up those frameworks, uh, we can really increase the speed as well as be able to increase the coverage of our tests. Uh, we're also able to then easily increase the percentage of test automation uh, because we, we set up the core uh, framework. Um, Next, we'll want to focus a little bit on uh, setting up frameworks across the different uh, development activities. A lot of times, uh, organizations forget to set up a uh, framework around requirements. So if we refer back to the development practices for test-driven development, um, we need to set up a common framework by which business analysts and others uh, architect, define, uh, and structure requirements. So if they use the same naming conventions and structure around setting up requirements, then it's easy to create new requirements, it's easy to leverage your existing requirements uh, for a new solution. And then the development team can take those requirements and easily create uh, their test plan, their test script, uh, before they do their development. We talked earlier about uh, the power of uh, looking at business process. Testing as a way to develop the requirements, but also then as a way to develop your tests. And so what's key for business uh, process testing in terms of setting up uh, your framework is identifying all the different components that need to be in place for a business process test. And how can I uh, break down my overall test and components so that I can reuse uh, some of those components? So as an example of say, if I have a website uh, if I'm going to do an end-to-end -end process for uh, an end user to come in uh, and log in, they first have to log in. I have to go check the store. I select an item. From there, I check out. Um, so that's an, an example of an overall end-to-end -end process. But I can break down every uh, one of those functions so that I can reuse those for another process. So I can break down the sign-in. I can break down... Uh, the checkout process, I could break down the payment process so that I can use those and plug and play those into other business process flows. Same thing on automation testing. When it comes to, say, uh, functional automation testing, it's important to set up the various frameworks, uh, which is the a lot of the automation scripts to make sure those are set up in the same form and fashion so that's easily uh, maintain those scripts ongoing, but also it's easier in terms of reuse of setting up those automation uh, testing scripts. So in and today we wanted to just uh, provide a brief introduction into some of the building blocks around continuous uh, testing as part of DevOps. And we do assist uh, organizations in multiple ways in helping them start their journey. So we can come in and assist in overall 
that can use testing readiness assessment and roadmap. Typically, uh, when we do that, we're looking at uh, what are the various frameworks you have in place today, what are some of the development practices, and then from there identifying uh, some of the frameworks that need to be implemented. As a result of that, we will set up an overall roadmap and journey uh, for you with that, and then we can come in and actually help implement those frameworks. Lastly, once you've got the frameworks in place, we can come in and help uh, actually uh, setting up uh, the various automation testing tools, business process testing to automated functional regression testing, as well as automated security and performance testing. So uh, it is a journey, but uh, by focusing on the building blocks first, you have a solid foundation by which then you can uh, move into uh, the automation tools. Mm -hmm.